By 1943, the war was not going well for Germany. Stalingrad had surrendered by February, costing Hitler and his allies 300,000 soldiers. The Battle of Kursk failed to advance German ambitions in July, ending in August, putting Germany on a constant retreat. North Africa had collapsed in May, with another quarter million men captured, and Allied forces had seized Sicily in July and were preparing to invade the Italian mainland. The U-boat war was going downhill, and the air war in the West was costing German pilots and air crews at a rate that they could never be replaced, and German cities were being bombed into ruin. So, one of the strangest plots in history occurred during World War II involving Adolf Hitler, Heinrich Himmler, and the Pope. What transpired is still the subject of great debate. What was the plan to kidnap the Pope? Who were the alleged participants? Why would Hitler think that such a plan was a good idea? And how close was it to being executed? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, a veteran of the United States Army and Marine Corps, former history professor, book author, and welcome to this episode of Forgotten History. Who the first person was to come up with the kidnapping plan is unclear. Most sources cite Hitler himself with creating the idea. But some others believe that SS Reichsfuhrer Heinrich Himmler was the first to mention the prospect. There is also evidence that this plot was in fact a disinformation operation launched by British intelligence to incite Catholics in the occupied countries to rise up against the Germans. From interviews, it would appear that there is in fact a plot to kidnap at least the Pope and others. The British would not have had difficulty learning of this plan and then used it to their advantage. During his testimony at the Nuremberg Trials on February 1st, 1946, former Major General Erwin von Lausen admitted that Hitler had issued an order to the Reichssicherheitshauptamt, or the Reich Security Headquarters, to organize a mission to abduct Pope Pius XII. Lausen also stated that Admiral Wilhelm Canaris, at that time the head of the Abwehr, or German counterintelligence, decided that upon learning of the plot, informed his Italian counterpart, General Cesar Ame, in Italian intelligence. They apparently, according to various sources, met during a secret meeting in Venice, Italy, on July 29th and 30th, 1943. It was mentioned that Lauhausen and Colonel Wessel Freitag von Loringhoven were also at this meeting. According to Lauhausen, Ame apparently spread the news and the plot was abandoned possibly leaking that information to the British. But was it that simple? SS Lieutenant General Carl Wolf stated that on September 13, 1943, Hitler gave the directive to occupy Vatican City, secure its files and art treasures, and take the Pope and the Curia to the north. Hitler allegedly did not want the Pope to fall into the hands of the Allies. In fact, on October 9, 1943, the British released a fake German broadcast claiming that everything was in place for the kidnapping mission. Two days later, another fake radio transmission claimed that Liechtenstein Castle, located in Württemberg, was to be prepared to imprison the Pope and possibly some cardinals. Such a broadcast would have brought serious inquiries upon who leaked the plan, and the primary persons were questioned, but no culprit was found. It is believed that Canaris, through Ame, was the source. Such a mission, even if unsuccessful, but only made known, would have been extremely detrimental to morale within the ranks of the German military in total, which makes the British propaganda release of this information all the more feasible. Colonel Wessel von Loringhoven committed suicide when his role in the Stauffenberg plot to kill Hitler was discovered, so his secrets died with him. However, his cousin, Bert Freiherr Freitag von Loringhoven, was well aware of the plot through his relative. And during my interview with him, he stated, Yes, we spoke about it, but long after the fact. According to Wessel, Hitler had this idea, for whatever reason, to capture the Pope, perhaps to use the pontiff as a bargaining chip as the Allies pushed to capture Rome. I do not know. I do know that he, Wessel, 
thought that it was a most foolhardy plan. I think that was one of the reasons he joined Stauffenberg. That is really all I know about that. And there is another reason for Hitler or even Himmler to rethink such a move. Millions of German and Austrian soldiers, not to mention hundreds of thousands of collaborators, were themselves Catholics. Authors David Alvarez and Robert A. Graham, in their book, Nothing Sacred, Nazi Espionage Against the Vatican, 1939-1945, published by Frank Cass Publishers in 1997, states on page 86, Historians have yet to uncover a single piece of contemporary evidence indicating that Hitler, Himmler, Bormann, or any other authority had any serious intention, let alone plan, to invade Vatican City and carry out Pope Pius XII's kidnapping. As for all the smoke, the recollections are post-war and suspiciously self-serving. The rumors and warnings, second and third hand, the alleged plans and concentration of forces undocumented. A few bits of credible evidence that do exist suggest that, in fact, there was no plan to move against the Pope. Alvarez and Graham may be correct in their assessment, but lack of evidence does not itself make the plot a historical hoax. Given the information from these interviews, this historian takes the position that it was in fact very plausible for Hitler, Himmler, or both to have considered such an operation. Karl Wolf himself stated to historian Dan Kurtzman and myself during our interview that many of Hitler's most sensitive decisions were never committed to paper. No letters were written, no written orders or memos. Wolf also told me that Hitler's belief that his verbal order was good enough to have things done. And I had my orders, get the Pope. The same could be said of Himmler, who was notorious for not issuing written orders for very sensitive measures, such as the January 20th, 1942 von Say conference, where the final solution was decided. Wolf said that Himmler was very enthusiastic at the possibility regarding the kidnapping. Playing devil's advocate, there is logical reason for Hitler to have not ever issued such an order. The mere fact that the Pope and the Cardinals were in Vatican City would have prevented the Allies from bombing the capital on legal, religious, and moral grounds. But we all must also consider that there were missions ordered by Hitler, such as the commando raid to rescue Mussolini from the Gran Sasso Mountain Resort by SS Lieutenant Colonel Otto Skorzeny on September 12, 1943. Skorzeny was also dispatched to kidnap the Yugoslav resistance leader, Josef Brutz Tito, on May 25, 1944. But they missed him by about an hour and suffered heavy casualties and only brought back one of his uniforms as proof of their mission. None of these missions left a paper trail. Wolf also claimed that he talked Hitler out of the plan in 1943 due to the possible issues with Catholic Germans. But that Hitler again brought up the subject later and on May 10, 1944, Wolf, accompanied by Father Pancrazio Pfeiffer, visited with Pope Pius XII. Wolf, at that time, was the appointed SS leader in Italy, so he had some leverage, and he recalled some of the terms between Hitler and the Pope during the 1933 German Vatican Concordat. Wolf said that Hitler had promised the Pope that there would be no such mission. Wolf reiterated this fact to the Pope, according to Wolf. The Pope then asked Wolf for a favor. As two men had been arrested and scheduled for execution as partisans, and he asked Wolf to give them a pardon. Wolf said that he complied and saved the two men before they joined the others who were in fact killed. Pope Pius XII was excoriated in the post-war period for his silence on the murder of the Jews and the role of Rome's chief rabbi, Israel Zoli, who ultimately converted to Catholicism. However, Pius did in fact rebel on certain issues and his opposition to the T4 euthanasia program led by Philip Buhler, the director of Hitler's private chancellery, and Karl Brandt, Hitler's attending physician. The Bishop of Münster, Clemens August Count von Galen, protested the T4 killings in a sermon on August 3, 1941, and he notified the Vatican. Due to the secret getting out and the widespread public knowledge and protest from Pius, Hitler ordered a halt to the euthanasia program in late August, 1941. In defense of Pius, what he knew about the genocide policy and when he knew it is critical. 
and he did become an outspoken critic of the Holocaust, which did not endear him to Hitler. In addition, American historian Dan Kurtzman in his book, A Special Mission, Hitler's Secret Plot to Seize the Vatican and Kidnap Pope Pius XII, released in 2007, takes the view that not only was the plot real, and despite never going beyond the discussion stage, the plan had merit. Kurtzman interviewed several people who had apparent knowledge of the plot, such as the aforementioned Karl Wolf, Rudolf Rahn, the German ambassador to the RSI, and his deputy, Eitel Mohausen. Rahn also stated to Robert A. Graham that any paperwork connected to the plot had long been destroyed. Also included in Kurtzman's interviews were Albrecht von Kessel, the deputy of Ambassador Ernst von Weizsäcker's office, SS Colonel Eugen Dolman, who was Wolf's liaison to Field Marshal Albert Kesselring, overall commander. I interviewed Dolman along with Wolf in 1984, shortly before Wolf's death, and Dolman, who studied in Rome as a young man, spoke Italian, and was an archaeologist, worked as an interpreter and was assigned to Wolf. He confirmed the plot, but he denied that there was anything more than just talk. No covert action had been taken, which seems strange given the thousands of German troops located in Rome at that time. If the plot had any merit, then the Gestapo chief in Rome, Herbert Kapler, would have definitely been notified, and he gave no such testimony at his trial after the war. This is especially strange, since Dolman was the commander of all police troops in Rome, as well as Wolf's adjutant, and he would have been involved and stated that there was not an actual plan, just a discussion from what he understood. According to Dolman, by 1944, the only man Hitler would have entrusted with such an event would have been Schwarzenegger. He was a proven and effective commando leader. Kurtzman also supports Wolf's assertion that Hitler and Himmler would have never issued such an order in writing. However, Wolf himself claimed to have written several reports to Hitler personally weighing in on the viability of such an operation, and the fact that it would have to be done in total secrecy using special troops if it were to be done at all. Wolf claimed that he once again talked Hitler out of this plan, citing the previous reasons, and that Hitler finally decided against the plan for the second time. Why Hitler would have dismissed his own plan, or even Himmler's plan, will never be known. So the questions remain, how serious was the plot to kidnap Pope Pius XII? What would have happened? What would World War II have looked like had such an abduction taken place? We may never know the answers to these questions. So we leave it to you to ponder the what ifs of this situation. Thank you for watching Forgotten History. Please click like, subscribe, and share. Send us comments and show ideas and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Until next time.